Hello everyone, welcome to my platform. I hope everyone's doing well and safe. So I'm back with another video on cloud financial management, which is basically cost optimization hub. So in my previous video, I covered the concept and the demo of new cost and usage dashboard powered by QuickSight, which is kind of a, you know, replica of the Kudos dashboard, the open source framework that what we talked about to my previous to previous video again as part of the cloud financial management series only. In this video, since the reinvent has uh, already happened and we have a good feature that AWS has given to us in terms of how you can do the optimization, like kind of an analysis that all your resources, like your EC2, whether you're doing a right sizing, recommendation is there or not, graviton uh, movement from your normal instances. So all those recommendation, all those optimization, how you can do that. So they have given us a tool called cost optimization hub, which is part of a billing and management console. And it help you to consolidate and prioritize the cost optimizing opportunity. So for example, if I'm running, let's say uh, 10 EC2 instances on Red Hat, in, Red Hat family or CentOS boxes, right? And if, there is a Graviton already in picture, right? Long back, AWS has given a Graviton processor. So cost optimization hub as a service will help us to identify where is the lag, where we can save a lot of cost while moving to, let's say 10 instances to Graviton, get the performance faster, like 30 to 40% of the performance faster and a cheaper cost. So that level of recommendation plus the right sizing, Obviously, we have a lot of different tools present in AWS, like compute optimizer, right sizing recommendation and all those stuff. It is already as there as part of uh, the tooling system within AWS, but cost optimization hub is a one place, a one consolidated place where you will see all sorts of recommendation. So we will take a look into that because I haven't used this service. This is the first time that I'll be going to enable on my account. Now, I can't show you the data because it takes somewhere around 24 hours to generate all sorts of data. But yeah, I'll show you how exactly the data will get shown as part of the documentation what AWS has given. I'm just uh, showing you the concept and the demo in this particular video. So let's look at few of the pointers that I have jotted down and then we'll jump to our AWS management console. So cost optimization hub, identify, filter, aggregate, quantify the savings of your AWS cost optimization recommendation. As I mentioned earlier, it will help you to identify, it will help you to filter, do the aggregation and quantify your savings regarding the cost optimization opportunities. So this tool seems to be very relevant to me uh, when it comes to AWS side of the house. I'm not talking about the other vendors like Azure and GCP because this is native to AWS. And if you're running a multi-account environment, which is part of an enterprise, then cost optimization hub giving you an opportunity, a sense of opportunity to go for your, you know, priority cost optimization uh, pointers. It is an interactive query, cost optimization, recommendations such as ideal resource detection, that's one important thing. So you're running uh, an instances which are ideal in nature and you're just giving the cost. So this particular service will help you to identify that, you know, the ideal resource, then you can get rid of the ideal resources or you can do a scheduling of those resources. Like if you're not using EC2 for a non-production hours, then stop it, right? And then start it again during your production hours. So it will help you to identify that. Resource right sizing in terms of EC2, in terms of Lambda as well. Let's say uh, you have certain memory, which is uh, not, con you're not consuming certain set of memories, then yes, you can drill down that memory, do the right sizing approach. Obviously, when we talk about right sizing, we mostly talk about the EC2 side of the house. Purchasing option across your multiple AWS region accounts in your organization without any data aggregation and processing. What does this mean? Across region, across account, because we have certain savings plan. So this will also give you an opportunity that uh, basically what kind of savings plan you should go with, you should opt for, or across the region or across the AWS organization, like multiple account model. Now, uh, this is something since this is first time uh, we'll be going to interact with the cost optimization hub. Again, uh, 
as per best of my experience when it comes to choosing the savings plan you have to very spe very specific in that right so the compute saving plan is a global savings plan over here it it will uh, you know allow your uh, instances running across region across your um, organization it will help you to uh, give you a discount on top of that EC2 savings plan and RIs are region specific so you have to be very careful how you are choosing the right combination so I'm hoping that uh, this particular service or a tool you can say that uh, will help us to identify those sorts of uh, you know uh, missing gaps basically gather all cost optimization recommendations actions across your cloud financial management services including cost explorer and compute optimizer again cost explorer we haven't talked much about that i will be going to create another video the next video will be on cost explorer because they have extended the journey from 12 months to 14 months of data obviously i don't have much data on my account this is more of a demo specific account that's why i don't uh, you know deploy a lot of services over here because i have to pay right so just for the demo purpose, I create and uh, delete the, those resources. Compute Optimizer, again, a very good service. I have already created a video on top of uh, con Compute Optimizer. So I'll share the link within the description section. Uh, please go through that. Uh, that will help you, you know, to understand what exactly Compute Optimizer is. So I hope this clears a lot in terms of what exactly we'll be going to talk about in terms of cost optimization. Of the main funda, main motto for this particular service is uh, giving a prioritization to your cost optimization opportunities by doing right sizing, identifying the ideal resources, purchasing right set am amount of your savings plan. So yeah, that will help you a lot. That's that's my perception after seeing uh, you know the documentation and everything. That's the initial impression. So when it comes to cost optimization hub, it supports six type of uh, you know opportunities uh, in terms of the recommendation action. This will not auto remediate. This will give you a recommendation, right? That you have to do this and you will you know see certain amount of savings. One, stop. Obviously, if you're not using any resources, if your resources are ideal, stop it, get rid of that. You will see a 100% of resource cost saving that we know that right right sizing moving to a smaller ec2 instance type ebs volume lambda in terms of memory size which i talked about and fargate task size that will also help you you know to uh, drill down the cost if you're running very high end servers then and you're not using that much of potential of that server so it's better to drill down that server to a smaller size right upgrade move to a later generation product such as EBS volume from IO1 to IO2 that will also give you a lot of uh, better performance better numbers in terms of the cost one of a great example which I always talk about when it comes to cost saving opportunity is GP2 to GP3 migration because uh, when you go to GP3 then you are getting a 20% cheaper uh, cost as compared to GP2 and the performance is better as compared to GP2 as well. So that uh, upgrade kind of a system will also help you to, you know, get a better performance and a cost. Graviton migration, this is running hot across the industry from last two years. But again, you need a very good amount of testing while moving to Graviton because they're like you're running a legacy application, you can't directly migrate to Graviton. It takes a lot of uh, testing. Dependencies are there in the legacy system. So that's why you can't migrate to Graviton right away. You have to do a lot of deeper analysis. So move EC2 instances, uh, that, are, that is a type of uh, x86 space processors on EC2 instance type with Graviton again it will save you the cost it will give you the better performance as well purchase savings plan compute savings plan EC2 SageMaker if you're using it so that will help you to you know uh, give a recommendation that what kind of savings plans are beneficial for you reserve instances it's part of uh, same system like EC2 RDS elastic cash uh, redshift reserve instances are already also there so yeah if you are using all these services and uh, cost optimization hub works on these uh, six pointers i guess it will grow in near future but for now we have six important pointers as part of the cost optimization pillar on which cost optimization hub has been created by aws so i'll stop my presentation i'll quickly jump to aws account just to show you what exactly i'm talking about 
Okay, so this is cost optimization hub article. I'll share the link few of the links in the description section. Please go through that because as I mentioned, I cannot show you the data because it takes somewhere around 24 hours. As you can see over here, once you enable it, 24 hours wait time for cost optimization hub to populate the data initially and data will refresh daily. Okay. So let me go back to my account. This is my parent account, which is a master pair account. And as you can see, I'm into the cost optimization hub enrollment page, right? So it's, it's part of the billing and cost management. So if you just search for billing and cost management in the search bar and on the left hand side, you will see cost optimization hub under savings and commitment. Okay. So you can go through uh, all these uh, documents, but the enablement is quite straightforward. You, it's a no brainer button. Basically you have to click, but yeah, in order to understand the mechanism, what they are doing in the backend, you just have to go through, you know, uh, the backend documentation, basically what they have created it. But the point is what we have talked about those six important pointers, what AWS has uh, created this cost optimization up is uh, the only way that you can you know, grow. They have tried the best practices uh, while creating the service. So as you can see, Cost Optimization Hub looks across AWS services to help you to identify the top categories of savings, narrow down to the list of actionable items, which includes EC2 type, savings plan, EBS, Lambda function, many more as part of the Cost Optimization Hub. Uh, you need a service role. Yes, uh, a new cost optimization hub service role will be created in your account and all the member account as part of the organization. So this account has, uh, so I have two accounts basically. This is master pair. I have another member account. So we have two options over here, organization and member account settings. So if you don't want to enable at all the account, then you just click this option. So go to that account and enable this or it's always better to, if you're part of an organization, do it for all the accounts, you know, just to see the data and everything. Now, uh, one more important thing, after you opt in cost optimization hub, it imports the organization recommended generated multiple services, right sizing what we have talked about, right? So this is very important. Uh, again, you have to wait for 24 hours to see the data. So again, uh, I'll try to post something in my, you know, YouTube channel that this is uh, the screenshots basically, right? So I'll try to tag some of the screenshots uh, if possible. So, or I'll share the link my, maybe on my LinkedIn. Uh, there you can see all those stuff. So I, I'm going to write an article as well uh, in near futures just to show all sorts of data. Okay, so just click enable. So I'm going for all the accounts and click enable. So once you enable it, uh, obviously, as I mentioned, 24 hours as per the documentation. So I have to wait. So you have two set of views, chart and table. It's loading up the chart. Uh, obviously, I don't have data. You can go for the filter. As you can see, all accounts, uh, the regions that you want to, you know, select with, the type of uh, resources that it supports. So we talked about EC2, Redshift, Savings Plan, RDS and all. All the recommendations actions upgrade the six pointers what we talked about implementation effort it will also show you like if it is uh, it requires very high effort or high effort medium critical so high, very high you can consider that as critical right uh, it will require a lot of effort for you to do that is resource needed restart needed yes or no you can do that it will show you that recommendation as well rollback possible it will give you that option two and based upon the key you can do that here you will see aws region aws account and uh, obviously the recommendation action implementation effort so you can filter it out from this particular section also view opportunities it will show you kind of a table formatted data over here as of now since i i, I mentioned i don't have any data i don't have savings plan but my billing for this month is somewhere around 25 or $30. Let's see. Uh, it's $23. It's getting uh, used by my credit that I have. Uh, so the service name is Athena. I was doing a, some sort of, you know, uh, the Athena queries and everything as part of the cost model. So that's why. Okay. Uh, one more thing. Uh, 
okay i haven't enabled the data export on this account so obviously i can't show you because this account doesn't have a quick site my other account does have a quick site so i don't have a relation between those two coming back to cost optimization hub again uh, let's wait for uh, 24 hour uh, again it depends right within 24 hours if i get the data which is not that much enough to you know show because i don't have savings plan and all those stuff so i'll not get the recommendation no none of the ec2 instances are running but this is the process of enabling it now let me go back to our documentation so once you enable it after 24 hours if you are running a resources the chart will look something like this like fifteen hundred dollar per month whatever the usage you have then uh, how much you're spending on ec2 ebs volume compute savings plan so all sorts of resource based upon the resource type this particular uh, documentation has been created you can go with the recommendation action so all sorts of uh, you know the recommendation based upon the six pointers that you will get savings opportunities as you can see over here we have ec2 instance it is idle so it's uh, recommended to stop it and you will save somewhere around 349 dollar right uh, you can go for the filter and all those stuff it's also giving for the right sizing again if you if you know if you're aware of a right sizing approach or compute optimizer as a tool this will also give you same sort of recommendation okay uh, here again similar set of uh, function you are you are uh, asking to do a right size it will give you this size of an instance which is the current and the recommendation one as well here it's asking you to purchase a compute saving plan so that uh, level of recommendation that you are getting as well ec2 instance as you can see c52x large the recommendation is r5 r6i dot large again depends what kind of application you are running so blindly don't follow uh, the service right based upon your understanding based upon your infrastructure application go for proper right sizing do the proper analysis don't blindly follow any specific tool that it's asking to go with again i'm not against the tool it's just the level of experience that i have uh, with the right sizing the savings and everything what i have done for my clients for my company uh, i i will tell you like uh, don't blindly follow any recommendation just do the deeper analysis and based on that you go for it because these tools are giving you obviously a recommendation right but doesn't mean that you have to go with r size r6 i dot large maybe another instance type right maybe uh, let's say r r5 a x large i i cannot comment on that based upon the application and everything just go for it Again, you have uh, the CLI command as well, AWS Cost Optimization Hub, list the recommendation so you can also do the interaction with CLI and SDKs. If you are a uh, you know, CLI savvy person or SDK savvy person, so you can go with that. The query will certainly give you result in a JSON format and yeah, it is generally available across all customers. Okay. So I hope uh, this clears a lot in terms of what exactly the cost optimization hub is all about, a centralized system for your recommendation across your multiple accounts, right? So please uh, watch this video, try to understand the concept, try to understand, obviously the enablement part is a no brainer. It's just a button click. You just have to select all accounts. That's the recommendation I would prefer to go with and uh, i haven't seen any pricing model for it so i believe uh, it is more of a free service from aws so you just have to enable it and uh, just wait for the data to come up place out a comment in the comment section if you're facing any issue i'll be there to help you have a nice day Bye bye